Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. So what we discussed in the earlier session, we just uh, had a glimpse of all the pipelines. What do you mean by EPL pipelines? What do you mean by ELT pipeline? How sparks works and all these things, correct? So, and we also had a look into the overview. What do you mean by cluster? What do you mean by spark cluster and blah, blah things. Okay. So now we're going to say, jumping into your spark environment, we have to understand what a Hadoop looks like. What, so what do you mean by Hadoop and how the Hadoop environments really work? So why the Spark comes into the picture? Please tell me why Sparks come into the picture to overcome the lacuna or to overcome the um, issue which is there inside my Hadoop environment. Correct. So to understand what is the lacuna or the what is the disadvantage of your Hadoop environment, then we can jump into our Spark. So basically, how a Hadoop or a big Hadoop framework works. So basically, how a Hadoop framework works. So Hadoop frameworks is nothing but a known as your master slave architecture. As simple as that. First, we need to understand what do you mean by Hadoop. So first thing, whenever I'm gonna say Hadoop, so where Hadoop works? Hadoop works on top of a cluster. Correct. What do you mean by a cluster? Tell me. Cluster is nothing but a computer. Correct. Or you can say a aggregation of your computer. So is this cluster looks like my simple computer? Yes. If there are n number of computers, let's say for example, inside a Hadoop server, there are three computers. So what we call this as? This is called as a three node cluster. Am I correct? Yes. Here. How many computers are there? Tell me. How many computers are there? Four, four computers. So can I say it's a four node cluster? Yes. Okay, so Hadoop architecture simply works like your IT industry works, as simple as that. So here is one manager, n number of, or five. here I'll say one manager, three reportings, correct? I am reporting to my manager. So who is the master? Manager is my master, correct? Yes. There are three reportings. These are my slave. So... Hadoop called as a master slave architecture. Okay. Why master slave architecture? Here is one hero or one master, and all the reporting, all reportees are works like a slave or master slave architecture. Okay. Inside here, inside my IT industry, we called the manager as manager. Here we called master as name node. Just do remember what is the term? Name. Node node okay so if you do remember what i say it is a multi node multi node means this each individual computer is working as a single node to here correct so master is known as a name node or nn what do you mean by these slaves these slaves are called as a data node why i'll gonna say okay why i'm gonna say data node okay. the first thing so can I say this is data node 1, this will be data node 2, dn2 and this will call as data node 3. Any doubt yes. here? Okay. So do at every moment, let's say for example you are working, you are not working, are you reporting to your manager? Yes. Let's say for example you are in league, are you saying, okay, similarly. So there is a communication between your bi-directional communication. So let's say, for example, your manager is coming to office. He will say hi. Are you also going to say hi? Yes. So there is a bi-directional communication between your master slave or name node or data node. This bi-directional communication or sync up is known as your heartbeat mechanism. What do you mean by that? Let's say, for example, your master is saying hi to you or your Manager is saying hi to you. So you will call the also response with a hi, correct? Hi or hello. So this is a sync up, but this is a response communication, correct? Similarly, a master and a data node, a name node and data node is always communicated in a bi directional way that is called as your heartbeat mechanism. Perfect? Okay. Yes. So when you define, uh, so when you install Hadoop system, that's when you decide how many name node and data node you need, or every time is by default yes. one name node. No. Whenever I define a Hadoop cluster, 
So basically cluster is something called as whenever you are basically it's not part of your job whenever a admin or system admin defines. So based okay. upon your data, based upon your project data, they will establish. Okay, let's say for example, I have a computer of, I know my computer configuration is 12 GB RAM and 500 GB hard disk. Okay. 12 GB RAM and 500 GB hard disk. One computer configuration. I know inside my project after two years, I may require maybe I'll say that 5 TB of data. Correct? I, I know the max size of data can be go to 5 TB. So tell me how many uh, how many nodes of cluster I require? Tell me. Here I have so one computer yeah. configuration is 500 10, GB. 10 times, 10, yeah. but, but we will go, now for, go for 12. Why I will say? Okay. But to store 500 GB I require 10. But I will yeah. go for a 12. Why I will go say? Because name node will not do. Is your manager is working? No. He is simply monitoring. No. Correct? Yeah. Manager will never gonna work. They will simply monitor. Simply, so I cannot manager cannot store data. Similarly, name node cannot store data. I will go. This is high. At the end, I will gonna show how this all this calculation will gonna happen. Okay. 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 So what uh, my flow is that is a uh, sorry one name node and other data node. Similar inside a group or inside a project, how many managers usually do that? There will be single manager. Correct. But n number of workers. Do you have seen inside a single project there are multiple managers? No, that will never gonna happen. One manager, all workers. Similarly, a normal cluster, a normal Hadoop, Hadoop cluster contains one name node, multiple data nodes. It might be five data nodes, it might be 10 data nodes, it might be 20 data nodes. But one name node, multiple data nodes. Perfect. Okay. So if you do remember at the beginning of the session, um, data engineering or your spark session what i said basically data engineering related stuff is associated with two things what is that the first thing is known as your data storing correct and second thing is known as your data processing agree so first i will do what i will gonna do i'll store the data then i will gonna process the data okay let me open the page let me draw the cluster here. This is one as you. What this is called as you. Then you know, I'll use in short form and then this is known as you. Take a note. Can I write it? DN1, DN2, DN2, and DN3. Now tell me. So the first problem is that the store and data. Let's say for example, I have a three node cluster is running. So what my client come and say, I set up the Hadoop cluster. What my client say, come and store. Okay. Maybe I'll write uh, two terabyte of data. Uh, no. Let it be erased. Okay, what my manager says just once to so I have a five hundred GB of a file. I have a single file which is five hundred GB. So first, what I'll gonna do? Tell me. First, I'll gonna store the data or I'll gonna process the data? Store the data. First, my first step is to store the data. Now we'll understand how simply work. Just think about your project. So whenever you, let's say for example, you are working for TCS and your client is Pepsi. Okay. Your client is Pepsi and you are working for TCS. So. Whenever your client comes, how the project is going to come? Is your project directly coming to you or it's coming through a channel called as project manager? Then, or, or you can say, uh, 
um, scrum master, then to your project yeah. manager, then to your developers. Correct. So yes. there is a class. Similarly, here just tell me, just say this is your client. Okay, this is your client. So client submitted a file of 500 GB. Okay, correct. Client submitted a file of 500 GB. That file will, will not directly, even if client would never gonna contact your manager, he will contact your maybe your country head kind of things or your advertise or your marketing yes. resource. Correct. So yes. this we called as your edge node. At this moment, just do remember what do you mean by edge node? I'm gonna come cover. This is called as your edge node. Correct. So, or you can say this is kind of your. I'm going to say, let's say, for example, I'll ask you go and or take a or go and spend a day in the uh, any movie theater. So whether you will directly going to sit in the movie or you will take a ticket for the entry, you will going to take a ticket. So edge yeah. node is nothing but a, you can, you can say it's a entry point to the cluster. So this is my cluster, correct? this is my whole yeah. cluster. So edge node is nothing but a entry point to a cluster. What here we are going to do? Here we will do simply authentication and validation on your resources. So what do you mean by authentication and validation? Let's say for example, you are a TCS employee. I am an InfoSys employee. Can I go ahead and access TCS Hadoop cluster? Can I able to do? No. No, simply I cannot do because I am not a TCS employee. Correct. Yes. I cannot enter into an Infosys cluster. I cannot go inside to a other client cluster. Correct. So through edge node. Let's say for example, you here is written this is a kids park zone. Can you able to go to the kids park zone? No, because you are not allowed itself. So even if you buy the ticket, also you are not allowed. Correct. Similarly, the edge node is nothing but the entry point or the validation proof area for your cluster resources. What it? What do you mean by edge node? Yeah. Simply, the project will be assigned to past your edge node, correct, or your marketing team. So once everything done, uh, cost everything is done. Then what happen? Then your marketing team will say, okay, they will calculate blah 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 things, and they will contact to your project manager or your manager. Am I correct? Yes. They will contact to your manager. Simply, once five hundred GB of a file is reached to your manager. So it's saying that, hey, first go and store this 500 people. We know inside my Hadoop things, first we're gonna store the data, then we're gonna process the data. Perfect. Yeah. What I need to do? I need to first to process or to do analytics, I need to store the data. So yeah. my first objective is to store the data. How I will gonna store the data? Tell me. So if you do remember, Distributed system. Yes. If you do remember, I say there is a distributed system perfect. And how my computer looks like, if you do remember, there are two things. One is HDFS and another is LFS. Correct? Yes. What is LFS? I sorry, I forgot LFS. Local file system. So just yeah. like your operating system of your computer yeah. or the area. So where I have installed my Hadoop, Hadoop software, I have installed my Hadoop software in LFS. LFS. Correct. Whatever the OS and all these things, I will install. Let's say, for example, this is a 500 GB node cluster or 500 GB node. So maybe I will going to say 100 for your LFS and 400 GB for your HDFS. Yeah. So this area, so this area is your distributed file system or look uh, or local file system this, this area which comes under your hadoop environment is a distributed one and this system which is only at, only maintaining for that cluster or maintaining for that computer is known as a sequential memo sequential data area or local data area correct so this yes. 400 gb for your hdfs okay now whenever i'm gonna say if i'm gonna say i have to store a 500 gb file so this file will come to LFS or HDFS? HDFS. Perfect. This file will gonna come into a HDFS zone. Okay. Now you might say here I have 400 GB and my requirement is to store 500 GB. How I'll yeah. gonna achieve? 
actual data stores tell me in the data node that's why yeah. we called it as a data node got it why we called as a data node yeah yeah who is the worker or slave the data node is the worker yeah. or slave name node do anything do no it's a no. simple monitoring or your manager is simply time pass or monitoring as simple as that here also name node is simply doing a repo or you can say a time pass between data node and client Okay. Yeah. So, but my system configuration is always 400 GB. Correct. Right. Here also I have 400 GB HDFS and 100 GB of LFS. Even if this system also applies. But I have a file of 500 GB. How are you going to store? I have 1200 GB or 1.2 GB of free space area, but not inside a single computer. Correct. Right. You got this uh, requirement. How I will gonna store this 500 GB? Can you I able to store it or not? Distribute equally? Yes, perfect. So what happened? So whenever you got a huge file, I'll not set a huge file. Whenever you get a Hadoop file, the Hadoop framework will distribute this file or split this file into small chunks. So these chunks is known as your what? Block. What is that? A small chunk of data inside Hadoop is called as a block. What is that block? P L O C K. Okay. And what is the capacity of a block? By default, in Hadoop two point or Hadoop two version, this is one twenty eight MB. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So now let me cross this GB to MB. Okay. Yes. So let me say I have a 500 MB of a file. How this 500 MB of a file will get distributed? Tell me. 128, 128, 128. Can I distribute like this? Three full blocks and one half blocks. This is 128 MB. Yes. This is another 128 MB. This is another 128 MB. This might be 76, what I do remember. Can you please calculate? I think 76 as per my understanding. Okay. So if you're going to see 128 into 3, 516. Hundred and sixteen. Hundred and sixteen. Sorry, this is your hundred and sixteen. So, is this gonna do it? So, this block. So, what is the default memory size of? What is the default size of a block? This is one twenty eight MB. Okay. So, can I able to change this block? Yes, you can able to do. There are lot, a lot of configurations are there. These are not our jobs. These are your admin jobs or your things, but by default, anywhere inside your organization, any organization you will go, you will go 128 MB as your default block size. You got it. What do you mean by block? Block yeah. is nothing but small chunks of data or split of data. Okay. How this 500 uh, MB of data? So, uh, do, you ever, do you ever change this block size or you always keep it to 128? No. We can able to change this block size, okay, but it's not advisable because okay. what we will gonna if we're gonna change, you have to change all these parameters. Correct. And the Hadoop is designed in such a way that this 128 is the optimized way because they have not done it so arbitrarily or randomly. They have an optimized thing. 
Okay. Let's say for example, let's say for example, why I'm gonna say in the next session. <coughs> okay, so here, how many blocks will be gonna fall? Three full blocks. Yes. And one partial block. Correct? Right? Yes. Is hundred and one partial block. Okay. So whenever now I'm let me come. So whenever here, how it will gonna form? Here it will gonna form block one B1. And I write B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4. Yes. After, so what will happen after this one form, what it will gonna come? It will come to this name node, okay. So this will come to your name node. What name so node will happen go? before? This will happen before going to name node. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, actually this is the part of your, means this, this framework will take care. So inside your name node, basically, basically, inside your name node, not before okay. uh, proceeding to the name node, inside your name node, the splitting. Okay. okay. So it's gonna done like this way. Okay. Once I have B1, B2, so now what will name node will do? Name node will look for the empty spaces which is available inside my data node. Okay. Which is available inside my data node. Let's say for example, this is a 500 GB, but what happened due to some circumstances, why, what usually happens, this cluster are always, let's say for example, is already full. This, this data node is already full. So can I store any file here? No. This is already full, already reached the threshold. So I cannot store it here. So based of the availability of resources, it will gonna store the file. Perfect. Got it. How the file will gonna yeah. start based upon the resource availability. Okay. Now I have not come yet. How it will gonna start? I'll I'll gonna tell. Okay. The file. So let's say for example, let's say for example, it will gonna store B1 and B2 here because my data node one is already full and B3 is B4 here. But due to some circumstances. My data node 2, if you do remember why Hadoop or what is the Hadoop? Hadoop is built on the, on top of my commodity machine. What do you mean by commodity? Very cheap vendor machine, correct? Commodity hardware. So let's say for example, due to any circumstances, on unavoidable circumstances, this data node got disconnected or died. So does my data lost? I have lost the data, correct? I have stored B1 and B2 here, but due to some circumstances, this is went off or this died, yeah. this data now. So I lost my data B1 and B2. To avoid that situation, there is one more concept called as replication factor. What do you mean by replication? It's simple, as simple as it's a duplication factor. That means, and what will be the default duplication replication factor is three. That means, so how many same copies will be formed? Three. Three same copies will be formed. So how many B1 will be there? Tell me. Three B1, three B2. Three B1 will be there. Three B2 will be there. And three B3 will be there. And three B4. So what will be the default replication factor? Three. Three. Okay. Now we'll come to one more thing that is called as your heartbeat mechanism. So whenever, if you do remember what I said, whenever you say a hi to your manager, he will also a, say hi. Correct? Yes. So this, this is a bi-directional communication. Correct. What do you mean by that? Bi-directional. So what happened? So in each 10th second, in each 10th second default 
डेटा नोड सेंड्स ए कम्युनिकेशन टू और ए हार्ट बीट टू ए नेम नोड एंड इन रेस्पॉन्स टू दैट नेम नोड आल्सो सेंड्स ए कम्युनिकेशन सो इन ए मिनट हाउ मेनी टाइम्स सिक्स टाइम करेक्ट हमें करेक्ट In ten second, one communication will be established between name node and data node. Name node and data node, and a bi-directional communication will happen. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. So that will be the default. Uh, at a bit, uh, uh, data travels is ten seconds. So you said six times because you have three data nodes. No, no, no. It's not up to that. It's a default. Even if you are twenty, thirty, fifty, also that will gonna remain same. So every ten second, uh, there is a heartbeat check, and uh, yes. it happens six Between times across the data node. Across the data node. Across data node data. one will also send. Data node two will also send. Data node five will also send. Is it at the same time or uh, same uh, time? Okay. Same time. Okay. And six so times. Have... Every ten seconds, it does it six times. Yeah. So okay. per minute, six times. Oh, per minute. Okay, got it. Okay. Per minute six times. So in tenth in each ten seconds. So okay. So what will happen? Let's say for example. Let's say for example, you are working remotely. You all are sending. You are sending hi. Sanket is sending hi. I am also sending hi to my managers. But my managers is not answering. What does that mean? That mean manager is out of office. He is enjoying. Correct. Yeah. So in this scenario, when the data node are sending, hat bit to the name node. But name node is responding. What do, what does that implies that name node is dying, correct? Yes. Is out of office. Similarly, let's say for example, name node is sending hi to data node one. He is respond responding. Name node is sending hi to data node two. He is not responding, but data node three is responding. What does that mean? Data node two is dying. Got it? So yes. which data node? Whenever there is a not a reverse communication or a sync up. Between name node and data node, that means either that data node will be dying or that name node will be dying. So it's a vice versa. So we have got it. How to got it? How to got it? Which one is dying? Either it can be dying or now the node can be dying. Perfect. Yes. So to avoid that circumstances, I'm gonna say to avoid that circumstances. Let's say, for example, at this moment we we'll say. My name node is running as expected, but my one of the data node is dying. One of the data node is dying. Correct right here. My D two is dying. Okay, D two is dying. So to avoid, let's say for example, I store B one and B two. Okay, to avoid that situation, what I am gonna do? I'll do a replication factor or duplication of the data. Correct. Right? What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a replication factor. Let me erase it out and I'll draw a new one. Just see what I'm trying to do. Let me write. This is something sixteen. Uh, I am not writing one sixteen. Let me write sixteen. Okay. One sixteen. Let me write one sixteen. Let me write one Okay. So you understand how this B one, B two, B three, B four are fermenting or any doubt? 